Okay. So let's kind of pick up where we left off. Uh, I said last time that I was going to tell y'all about vectors, and I am. Well, let me define first. How many of you are familiar with matrix? Right? I mean, you know what one is, you've seen it, and you, at least you can count it, read, right? Is M by N array. And of course, we've been using matrices already. It's a thing I call the augmented matrix that we use for coefficients and solutions and equations. Uh, this is what an N by N matrix is. Uh, sometimes we'll say, Let me read this for you. A, my matrix, is N. That little backwards E symbol in math is N. This means R N by N. This is M by N matrices with entries in the real numbers. A vector is uh, Well, you say it is, uh, say it is a single column. Uh, thanks. So sometimes I'll write it in this form. This is an N by one uh, column. So it's just a vertical array of numbers, right? Just in numbers, in the end, real numbers that you want. Now, you all have had some uh, experience with this, probably. How many of y'all have had like a, a basic physics course? Has anybody done that where you add vectors? I've seen this in a number of other places, like maybe in chemistry, for example. Uh, So, there's a couple of things you can do to vectors. Number one, yeah. you can add them. And you add them just coordinate wise. Now, let me tell you something that may be a little foreign to you, but it is true. In math, don't do something unless it's easy. Almost everything in math is easy. Let's make things common sense. If you had to make the rules to how to add up these two vectors, what's the easiest thing to help you that you could remember? That's right. Just add them coordinate by coordinate, right? The first entry, A1 plus B1. The second, just add up these, A2 plus B2, all the way to A N plus B1. That's the easiest thing I can think of that will help me remember to get two in uh, by one vectors to get a new one, right? And there's something else you can do. Anybody know what the other magic thing we can do to a vector? Uh, Multiply it by, oh, this is actually kind of important. Yeah. So, you can multiply it by a real number. So you can multiply a vector by 
a really uncle or a complex number, whatever else. And how do you do this? A1, A2, AN times some number lambda, maybe lambda is two or negative seven or even zero. What happens when you multiply this thing? Hey, remember, don't do it if it ain't easy. What's the easiest way that I can multiply a vector by that? Multiply each one. Multiply each one. Multiply each one. Well, those are the two big things that you can do to vector. You can add them up and you can multiply them by what we call a real number. And sometimes this is called scalar multiplication. And I've always figured that scalar comes from the fact that you're scaling the vector. If you multiply by one, you get the same vector out. If you multiply by two, you're making it twice as long. If you multiply by negative one, same length, probably opposite direction. So, and you can combine these. So let me give you kind of a, a numerical example, if you will. So what are we doing here? Well, I've got three vectors uh, in R3, uh, and I am going to add them up. The first one will take the first one, I'm going to multiply by six, this one by negative five, this one by seven. Uh, I don't have to take this many steps, but I will hopefully, I hope for clarity, 18, 0, 24. All right, we're going to multiply six by this first one. I'll put the next one by negative five and the last one by seven. And what's the final verdict? Well, that's 64 and that's two. And that is one of my Well, that's kind of how you do this thing. Uh, and let me tell you also the way to add two vectors in a plane. Let me, let me, I'm going to give a geometric interpretation of this. Let me, let me add that. Well, that is this is seven and negative one. Everybody agree? But let me give you kind of a geometric interpretation. Yes. Let's look at this first vector. Let me call this B. Now I can interpret this vector as um, over five down four, down four, say. So maybe something like this, more or less. That's interpretation of first vector. The second one, let's call this just for giggles, we'll call this U. And that one is say over two and up three, maybe like this. Now let's see how all two scale is, right? What's the outcome? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Six, seven. The outcome was over seven and down one, so maybe like this. Right. 
I agree with that. And guess what? Now, if I'd done this really right, this would be a parallelogram, right? But that's how many of you have heard add vectors by using a parallelogram or going head to tail, right? Um, notice that this vector right here is equivalent to V as well, because notice that it's got the same direction and the same length. And then, it, well, it would have the same direction if I draw the picture a little better, but you all get the point, right? And this one is the same as you because it's the same direction and the same length. And you can actually think of this as, uh, you can actually draw this with head and tail. Here's another example. Um, Draw this vector here. Let's call this U. What would two U look like? Well, two U should be basically double. Oh, yeah, it should be in the same direction, only twice as long. And that's what I'm scale of my You know, scales, right? What about negative three? Well, that's right. It should be three times as long, but in the other direction. So I'm going to get this about right. And actually, you might say, well, Jim, you're kind of limited here because you're only two dimensional vectors. But actually, this kind of picture works for any dimension vector, right? It's because it doesn't matter how many dimensions you're in, two vectors forms at most a plane. Everybody agree with that? In fact, maybe it just forms a line, right? But it forms at most a plane. And so you can always translate, if you've got two random vectors in 10 dimensional space, you can translate to the plane that they're in and draw a picture and you get the same result, which is kind of cool. Okay, any questions so far? All right, so the lawyers basically write down some rules here. So here are some properties of vector addition and multiplication. Let U be W B N R N. So this notation, remember, that means lens in. U, B, and W are vectors in R N. And we're going to let A and B be real numbers. That notation means that A and B are just real numbers. But okay, so far. So here are some problems. Number one. Let me ask you a question. Do you suppose it matters what order you add two vectors in? It does not, right? Because all you're doing is adding the coordinates, right? And so it doesn't matter what order you do. So uh, here's another one. If you're adding three vectors, it doesn't matter which two you combine first. Same with adding up ordinary numbers. Um, there is a vector called zero vector that when you add it to any vector, it leaves one. Can you might describe what the what vector can I add to any vector that leaves one? Can you describe what that vector has to look like? Yeah, it's all zeros. All zeros. That is correct. So your U vector is just a vector that's filled up all the zeros, whatever the appropriate size is, n zeros in this case. Um, Take any vector 
and you add it to its negative, you get the zero factor, where what I mean by this is negative one times the u factor. So if you take the u vector and you scale it by negative one and you add it to the original vector u itself, you get the zero vector. All of these things uh, I could prove for you, but I don't want to put you to sleep. It's very easy, very important. Uh, number five. I hate this. This is kind of a game show sort of question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What do you suppose is going to be over here? A what I, that is what you can distribute out multiplying by a number. Uh, number six. Got to plug the other side of that jar over here. You can distribute the number as well as the vector. Uh, number seven A times BU is AB times U. Or sort of an associativity, if you will. And A, this almost was silly, but it's actually needed. When you multiply any vector by one, it leaves it alive. Okay, any questions? These are the rules. I don't think any of these rules would be complicated to remember because they're the exact same rules that you have for like adding numbers, essentially. Adding and multiplying. Okay. Um, let me introduce you to the notion of a linear combination. Um, A linear combination of the factors P one, P two, B N is a vector of the form. Uh, A1, B1 plus A2, B2 plus A2. Here are the AIs are real numbers. And sometimes they're called scalars. Or weights, especially things like statistics, sometimes they call them weights, right? So basically, it's weighting how important each vector is. Like, multiply this by some number, this by some number, this by some number, and add them up. This makes a new vector, and this is called the new combination. Um, right. So, for example, Two times one one minus three times two one plus seven times one minus one is a linear combination of these three factors. And this is what two minus six is three and minus one seven and seven. And you know the sort of linear combinations of new two by uh, one vector. Okay. So let me get, let me give you an example. Uh, this vector, this vector business, 
it's actually useful when we think back to uh, our system system linear equations. All right, so let me give you an example. Looks like D1 being vector one minus n three or D2 being vector two zero five and D three vector three over minus two. Okay, so let's just suppose that somebody walked up to me on the street to get his free credit. Okay. So I've got a question. And my question is Thank you. Oh, you equal. 7, 11, 10. Uh, a linear combination. Is it can I can I realize that new vector that U has a linear combination of those? What do you think? Actually, I think the smart money's on yes. I don't know the answer yet. We don't have to figure it out, but I, I would guess maybe. Well, let's see. How would we attempt to solve this? Well, for this to be a yeah, go ahead. Um, we would set up a Matrix using such such that like I no, I think you're I, I, you're right with the matrix, but you forgot something from the previous lecture. And that is my parents' presence. So I'm, I'm going to take it a step shorter than. So let me take an intermediate step. The first thing I want to do, kind of linear combination, is I want to see can I find some three numbers? Let's say x one, x two, and x three. So can I find Can I solve that equation? Can I find value for x1, x2, x3 that balance that equation? All right. So let's, I, I think I, I see where you're going with the matrix thing here. So what's the one? One minus one, three. And this example actually has an important theme to it. Four minus two is equal to u, which is seven plus you know. So to solve this, we're trying to find x one, x two, and x three that balance this, right? Now. Write this linear combination here. Let's, let me put this all together. It's a little more money. So here I have x1 minus x1, 3x1 plus 2x2, 0, 5x2 plus 3x3. 4x3 minus 2x3 equals 7, 11, n. Right? And so I can group all that big mass of vectors on the left side into one vector. X1, x2.
uh, minus x1, and x1, x3. Notice, what are we doing? This takes us back to day one. We're solving a system of equations, right? Solving this equation, trying to figure out if this new vector u is in the span or is a linear combination of these is the same as solving the equation. This equals this. This equals this. This. Equals this. Everybody agree? So let's figure it out. Let's make our augmented matrix like a. This theme comes up over and over. Two, three, seven, minus one, zero, four, 11, three, five, negative two, 10. So I'm gonna use this one to take out stuff below it. I'm just gonna straight up add here. Seven. Uh, straight up at I get zero, I get two, I get seven, I get 18, and so it's negative three, right? So I get zero, uh, minus one, that's three, get zero, minus one, uh, looks like minus 11. Uh, Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Uh, let me take another step. Um, my next step. I'm going to multiply bottom row times minus two and a half. Kill the two, right? Uh, zero, eleven, eleven. Multiply this pi two and add, and I get zero, I get minus fifteen. Uh, and I get minus four. Okay, do one more step here. One, two, three, seven. I'm gonna I'm gonna swap these two rows, and I'm gonna change the sign of both of them. Right. So I'm gonna swap these two, and change just I'm gonna multiply both of them by negative one. Uh, 0, 1, 11, 11, 0, 0, 15, 4. Now, take me back. What did the question ask? This is another important thing in engineering, science, et cetera, et cetera. Don't know. What did I ask in this question? I asked if I could solve this, right, if you could write it as a linear combination. Do I agree with that? Did I ask how to write it as a linear combination? No, I only ask if there's a solution, right? Nobody wants to go any further than this, and we don't have to. Can somebody tell me why I know what the answer is? Just, yes. Wait, the one and the one. Well, I claim that this system is actually um, consistent. That's all I really know. Why do I know that? Because uh, you were able to solve for one max substitute three. He's absolutely right. Notice, do I get a row of zeros and a non zero? This is not in row reduced echelon form, right? But is it clear that uh, I can get a one here and a one here and take out those columns, right? And he's right, you can back, back substitute. This is x3 as some number. 
Now you plug that in here and you get X2 as some number. And you plug those two in here and you get that. So this is solvable, right? There's no rows, zero, 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 something not solvable, right? And that's all we need. So the answer here is yes. If you want to actually find out what the X1, X2, and X3 are, you got to go further and solve this. And do it and, and, and see if, if you get the right answer. You can always, that's another good thing about this class and most math classes is your checkpoint, right? So you can almost always check it. Let me uh, give you a fairly, and then I'm going to teach you how to multiply major and stuff like that. This is this theorem just generalizes the same thing we just did. The vector equation uh, let's say x1 a1 well let's say p1 plus x2 b2 xm bn is equal to b. Has same solution set as um, linear system with augmented matrix. B1, B2, Bn, B. So let me make a remark. So B is a linear combination. Uh, B1. Again, uh, if and only if the system is consistent. It's augmented the system, this augmented equation is consistent. Okay, any questions? Okay, so let me give you one last definition before I show you to get into vector equations here. So let these n vectors be in Rn. So they're column vectors with n rows. Then fan of B1 into Bn is the collection of all. Linear combinations of uh, uh, So if you look at every possible linear combination, by the way, I know one linear combination is always there. That's what you tell me. Oh, very good. Zero always has to be there because you can multiply every vector by zero and you get zero vector. I agree. But V1's in there, D2's in there, all the way to Vn's in there. Uh, 
add them all up, that's in there, two times this plus three times this is in there, and so forth and so on. So let me give you a couple of geometric examples here. What's the span of one one? That's silly. There's only one vector in there. Just one one. What are linear combinations does that one vector look like? There's one one itself. Two two. One and a half, one and a half. Four four. Negative one, negative one. Any multiple of this? So this can somebody tell me what this looks like if I fill them all in? Right, and the line y equals a. So this is actually the span actually looks like this line here. All of the combinations. Here's one that might be a little bit harder to visualize uh, until you get used to it. What about this? Span the well, of course, you can ignore this one and take the entire span of this. You this so it's at least these two lines. What else? Well, is if you just straight up add them up, get to the circumference. So you've also got this vector here, say, which you could weight that. You could do a half of this and a half of this, you know, one zero. So you've got anything along this line as well. Anyone want to take a guess as to what the span of this is? Yeah, or two. Everything. Exactly. That's right. Because by weighting this a certain amount, if you want to get this, you can basically, if I wanted to get, let me make something up here. If I wanted to get the vector, say, uh, what is it, 6, uh, 2.2. You can set up a system of equations. This C1 times this, C2 times this, and solve it. And you can find that everything in R2 is back to the span. This is all R2. That may not be, but I tell you, this is all R2. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Well, 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 let's see Okay, any questions? Okay, uh, what I want to do now actually is I formally, I think we we're going to learn this later in the course, but I find that it's, I think the students actually have a better time if you know sort of how to matrices. Anybody, I'm curious. If I if I walk up to you on the street and give you two matrices, do you know how to multiply? That's another thing I've talked about is how to multiply matrices. I'm going to do this informally. We'll do it with a formula later. I want to show you how to do it. Anybody know how to multiply two matrices? Yeah. The Go you know how to do it? Okay, so let me give you an example. Let me tell you something here. Suppose I had an N by M matrix and then an M by T matrix. Then you can multiply them and the outcome will be 
If you don't match in the middle, you can't multiply. So let me multiply, let me do something. Like two by three matrix times a three by two matrix. Okay, two rows and three columns. Uh, one, two, one minus one, four. And I need three rows and two columns. Uh, so seven, four, minus one, minus one. So those What should my output matrix be if you pull in model formula here? It should be a two by two matrix. So I've got four blanks to fill in. And how do I do it? Just do row by column. The first, the first row, first column should be multiplying the first row by first column. And you take it point by point. 14. Minus one plus zero is 13. Do it again. I want the first row, second column. So multiply the first row by the second column. And this is why you have to have the numbers in the middle match. This, this row times this column. This is eight minus one is seven plus six is 13. Now, I want the second row, first column. So multiply the second row times the first column. Seven, eight, zero, eight. And finally, second row, second column. Multiply the second row, second column. And four plus one is five plus 12 is seven. Does everybody see how I did that? I think maybe a little more. Let's multiply a okay, four rows, three columns. So one, two, three, four, zero, one, one, zero, two minus two, three, seven. I have three columns. Okay, there's four rows, three columns, times three rows and two columns. So um, two, one. Minus one, three, uh, zero, uh, five. What should my output be? What size of the matrix should I have? Four by two. That's right. It should be four by two. So there should be four rows and two columns. Yeah. Let's try to fill that in. To get the entry in the first row, first column, multiply the first row, that's the first column. So we have two minus two is zero and zero. So I get zero. To get the first row, second column, multiply the first row, I'm second column. So that's going to be one, six, seven, 15, 23. You get the second row, first column. The second row times first column is zero minus one, zero. That. Second row, second column. I'll apply this for the second column. That's going to be zero, three, and five to eight. Now, third row, first column. That's going to be four and two to six. This times this is going to be two minus six. Minus four, 15, 11. And finally, this is going to be eight. And this is going to be four, 35, 30. Okay, everybody see how to multiply matrices? Is that, is that okay? 
Okay, right. we're going to talk yeah. about this more forward, but I think that if you know how this, you've got this at your fingertips now, it'll make things a little bit easier. Uh, let me, now that we've got this, this is just kind of a recouching of what we've already done in this period, and that is uh, matrix equation. So let's Let's let A be so I have a matrix that looks like this. We've got in rows and in columns. And let's let X be the column vector. By the way, this is an N by N matrix. This is an N by one matrix, because otherwise you can't multiply. So And so another way that we can couch all this business that we've been doing is in terms of matrix equations. So So here, I can write A this way. Notice it's got in columns. Lots of times later in the course, we'll see that this, uh, writing the, the matrix this way, in columns. If you have AX, you can write this as, B1, B2, BM, and we can write this as X1, D1, by the way, let me give you all a little pointer about taking this class. This is really, fairly easy to see. It's X1 times the first column, X2 times the second, and so forth. X2 times the column. That's what your output is. Write a numerical example. If this notation confuses you, work through a couple of uh, numerical examples. I myself find that very helpful uh, to kind of see what's going on. Uh, and then so here is the theorem. So we can sometimes, so notice what this is, is we've basically done with them before. Here are our vectors, D1 up to Dn, and we've got sort of coded into this matrix. And here's this vector x1, xn. These were the solutions that we were looking for there. So here's a theorem. You know, A, is in R in by you know and B is in R in then the matrix equation AX equal B has a solution or let me say has same solution as Uh, X1, B1 plus X2, B2 plus X, M, Q, M 
uh, is equal to B. And this should look familiar because this is what we planned earlier, which has the same solution as. The augmented matrix, uh, B1, B2, B2, yes, and So AX equals B is consistent. If and only if. B is in span of the columns. So that should be the last takeaway point of today is when can you solve this equation uh, for A exit to B? Only if B is actually in the span of whatever the columns are. And this is all tied together in the deep package. Work on this. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you all in the morning.